Hi everyone and welcome back. My name is Alex and welcome to Package Main, a place where we talk about backend development, Go, DevOps, Cloud and other similar topics. And in today's episode we are going to talk about software architecture diagrams, C4 model, but more specifically about how to create those diagrams using code and using a tool called Structurizer. And actually, already some time ago, we published an article on our packagement.tech newsletter talking about C4 model, about Structurizer. Um, so we won't go much into the theory, but rather focus on hands-on task of creating those diagrams using the Structurizer DSL, um, rendering those diagrams and maybe automating them. But first of all, let's refresh our memory about what the C4 model is. So C4 model is an abstraction that was created to help uh, developers and development teams to describe and communicate the software architecture. And C4 tells us that there are four layers that are enough to describe a complex software system. Um, so these four layers are context, containers, components, and code. So that's why it says C4. And the best analogy to to describe the C4 model is to compare it to how you use Google Maps, for example. Let's say you want to explore some area, we start zoom, zoomed out, then we zoom in, find a street, then find an apartment, etc. In C4, we start with the context layer. That's where we see actors and systems and their relationships. So it could be internal systems, external systems. Then we go level deeper, it's containers. That could be our microservices databases, uh, message buses, etc. Uh, we can go deeper into that and uh, split a container into the components, which are the building blocks of our application. So this very simple example shows that our API container consists of CRUD component, authentication component, and etc. And the last layer is code level. Um, I rarely see people use it because Code already paints a quite good picture. Uh, you can put comments there, just structure code well. Um, however, it's there and maybe if you're working on a very complex system, um, you should use it, but I kind of always use these three first layers and that's pretty much enough. And in this article, you can also see a few examples of the diagrams that we can create using those layers. So. Um, this one shows, for example, actors and external systems and our internal system, which is task management. Um, then there is a, a API container in this system. It has the following components, such as authentication, CRUD. And it's very important to understand that C4 model is it's not a tool, right? It's a tool agnostic. It's just an abstraction. and. You can use any tools you like or you have experience in, such as you can draw it by yourself, you can use Plant UML, Mermaid. I personally nowadays like to use a tool called Structurizer. And Structurizer has its own DSL or domain specific language, which you can use to model your software system and also create multiple diagrams from the same model. Now, a few notes about Structurizer. Um, it's actually much more than just a DSL. It's uh, they have a, also a cloud uh, solution. They have on-prem solution. They have a CLI to run. So there are multiple ways to upload your .dsl files and actually render them as as diagrams. Nowadays, I rarely use cloud and on-prem solutions. I rather use this tool called Structurizer Site Generator. This tool can take your DSL model and then render it into the uh, HTML web page that you can then self-host or just uh, browse locally. So quite helpful. It also has a GitHub action, so you can integrate it into your GitHub action CI. I believe that it's a wrapper of Structurizer CLI, uh, but I'm not sure about CLI, right? So you can also use that. You can export your diagrams into Plant UML, Mermaid, or if you use Structurized Cloud, you can 
push it to your um, instance or on-prem instance probably as well. Um, so I don't use this tool, but uh, you may find it useful. Cool. Now let's take a real example, real software system and try to uh, model it and create a few diagrams out of this model. Um, I like using real systems instead of, you know, these pet projects kind of to do MVP. Um, it's just more natural. And I picked quite simple software. That's the tool I wrote recently. It's called Formulosity. And this tool lets you create and deploy surveys uh, as code. So you don't need to use visual editors to create your surveys. You can write them in YAML files. And yeah, this tool will just create web pages for you that people can open and answer this uh, surveys. Um, so if we browse it quickly, Imagine that's the survey structure, so a bunch of YAML files um, that kind of define your survey questions. Then as a user, you can open this service, which are just a bunch of forms. As an admin, you can manage these surveys, um, see the responses, etc. So yeah, now let's go and try to model this software system and create a few diagrams, then render it and maybe explore some automation options. So I mentioned that there is this structurizer DSL, um, which is a very simple language. It has a bunch of keywords, but you it's not a full language, right? You probably need just 10 minutes to see how it works, learn a few keywords, and that's it. So it's pretty easy to, to learn it. The documentation is quite well. Uh, written as well, so you we can see uh, examples and just very easy to follow. All right, so we just need a single file for our model, and we usually start with workspace, which has a name, so formal, formalosity, and probably an optional description. So let's say service as code. And inside this workspace, we can define our model. Now, I'm sorry that I don't have any syntax highlighting here because just my IDE doesn't have one for Structurizer DSL, but it's not that important because the syntax is quite simple. Um, I mean, if you want some colors, you can probably enable some JSON uh, language then because it's, it's very similar, but I don't need one. Um, cool. Inside our model, I usually start with actors of our system. So uh, entities or users who interact with that. Then I define a list of external systems. And then we go to more uh, in-depth uh, declaration of our internal services code system and containers, components, all of that. So let's start with users. So called actors, so structurized DSL also supports comments, so all, of, all good here. Um, there's a keyword called person, so, um, and the first one would be a survey user, so a user who opens the service and uh, yeah, answers them. And actually, let's just, let just call it user, and survey user will be its description, and the last um, argument uh, is a tag. So this one is optional, but tags are quite helpful then in the future maybe to specify different styles for different tags. Yep, and we can do a similar user, which is called admin. And let's say console admin, because Formosity also has a user um, that can manage the surveys, um, delete them, I don't know, see the responses. So there are two types of users. Now, as I mentioned, we can define the external systems. And the one external, external system Formulosity has is GitHub. So it can pull the repositories from the GitHub and then parse them. So let's have a block for external system systems and define our GitHub system. Um, there is a keyword software system for that. 
GitHub and description is survey configurations and maybe tag external. Now let's dive into our internal system, which is our application itself. Let's call it service system. And it's also a software system. Let's call it formal, formulosity. Let's describe it as service as code. And now we can open this block and inside define all our containers and components. So the first one would be server UI container with the keyword container is the name server UI with the description um, survey web pages container keyword actually also uh, has an argument for technology so we can put next.js in my case um, yeah and maybe also give a tag frontend now we also have a similar container but for admin parts so let's call it console ui container with the name console ui and description something like survey management page it's also not in next.js and also front application um, we also have a database container there so let's call it database mm, let's say survey storage and technology so you can use that two databases uh, sqlite or postgres so i just define sqlite for now here and we give it a database tag now let's define our API container, which we'll describe a little bit more in detail. So API container. So it's REST API, it's in Go. And yeah, we can open this block here as well and define the components inside of it. And we could do the same in DB container and our UI containers. Um, but yeah, just for, for the demo, we'll do it only on API container level. So this API container has multiple building blocks. It has a parser to take GitHub repositories, YAML files, parse them, validate them, generate the surveys. It has kind of management and endpoints for the console user it has public endpoints right so we can define those as, as components here so parser component is and here we use the keyword component so let's call it parser and the description is let's say parse validate service then we have our user api component user API and it's uh, and it's a public user API and there is also an admin API component which which is private let's say admin API okay so so far we defined our actors external systems and internal system we also have few containers, few components. Uh, now the fun begins. So we can set the relationships between all of these entities. So let's define them relationships. And first of all, we can start with actors as well. So users, how they interact with our system, right? And to do that, we can use a uh, error syntax to define the unidirectional relationships so we can write it like user uses our server ui container and we can put a verb here as well 
So it reads like user uses zero UI container. And we can do the same for our admin user. So admin user uses console UI container. After that, we can define the relationships between our containers. For example, API container uses database, or we can write like stores service in. Then our two UI containers, they use API container, right? They, they make HTTP calls to the API, so maybe calls, and the same would be for console UI container. We can also go to components level and also define how containers call which components and maybe external systems, etc. So for example, our again server UI container calls server API component, right? So we can do that. We can do similar for admin API. And our parser component, on the other hand, uses our external GitHub system to fetch the service configuration. So fetches service config. So yeah, as you can see now, we have few relationships. Not all, but the, the, the most important ones. Okay, now having our model, we can define multiple views to to kind of display our uh, software system. And in this views block, um, we can kind of have a system context, container diagrams, component diagrams. So I'll do this three and I'll also show later the a dynamic one. But as you can see, there are others like deployment diagrams and yeah, a few others as well. So yeah, after the model section, we can create views. And the first one would be system context, then the name of our system. Then we can include everything here. You can configure uh, what you want to show and then auto layout. We can also create another view for containers that we have, so this keyword container, and also component. However, here we need to specify the name of our container. Cool, so now we have these three main views. Now, as I mentioned, let's use this uh, CLI program to generate the HTML web page. So back to our Structurizer site generator application. Um, I use Max, so I already have it uh, installed with Homebrew. Um, you can run it inside Docker. So yeah, let's get um, let's run this application. Um, yeah, so as you can see here, we specify the input file of our diagram, so it's .dsl file, and the output folder where to put the HTML files and all the assets. Cool, so it compiled, um, there are no errors. Let's check the folder and yes, we have the HTML files and some other assets. Now let's uh, open this file so you can open them locally. I use the serve command that yeah, basically puts a web server for a given folder with assets. So we'll do that and open our page. So that's what was being generated, right? There is a home page that you can customize by following these commands. Um, there are our systems here, so external GitHub, formulosity. So yeah, let's go to our system. And here are the views that we have created. So the, the context view shows our users, our um, software system, right? And some external dependencies. Then we can see the containers. So we have two UI containers, we have API, we have database. 
we can click on our API container because we have components there and see, uh, yeah, it's building blocks, uh, which are APIs, parsers, um, and parser uses GitHub. In actually, my application does a little bit more, but uh, that, that's just to show. Um, also, there are no inter-components uh, relationships here yet. We can also add them. So these are the most common views you can create out of your model. As I mentioned, there is also there are also other possibilities. Let's now kind of dive deeper into this dynamic view that lets you, you know, define your own view, uh, build different relationships between different parts, and then yeah, see it. And we can edit here. So we'll dynamic, and then also the name of our system and a keyword. And let's call it a survey parser. And yeah, let's define a few relationships. So first, let's say API container goes to GitHub system, right? So it fetches the, fetches the service, for example. Then also API container kind of stores the service in, and we can kind of skip the database part because it's written here. Then we have our, how is it called, survey UI container that goes to API container and let's say displays available service. And yeah, let's also use the default layout. Um, yeah, you can use the dynamic views to you know describe any specific flow or process in your system. Yeah, that should be working. So let's go back and render it again and and see what's there. Cool, so we build that and let's run it again. And so if we refresh this page, yeah, we should be able to see our dynamic views, which is yeah what we described previously. Cool, so you can render the, the diagrams using this approach, which builds the, this folder locally, uh, but you obviously don't want to push this folder to, to your GitHub repository. So this project has a GitHub action as well that I use quite often. So yeah, this GitHub action has two jobs. So uh, one is built that yeah runs pretty much what we did recently. Um, it uses the Docker image, it then pushes an, an artifact, and then in the second job it gets this artifact and deploys it to GitHub pages. So that's one approach. You can use something else, but um, yeah, I'll put a link to this action in the comments below, so you'll be able to to, to play with that. All right, we, as you've seen, we spent about 10 minutes modeling our software system, doing some diagrams, so not that much. Though, I mean, our software system was not that complex, but, but still, um, I find this approach quite useful, you know, keeping your diagrams close to the code base. You know, I like this approach quite well, keeping your diagrams close to the code base, because yeah, whenever you change something, you create the same pull request, update the diagrams. Um, but it's not the only approach, right? You can use, uh, as I mentioned, tools like Plant UML, Mermaid, uh, Excel Draw just to draw by hand, because C4 model just an abstraction. So yes, I believe that creating and maintaining diagrams should be effortless, so you are not stuck with some old relics, and this approach might help. Cool, thanks for today. Feel free to subscribe here or follow us on our packagement.tech newsletter. Also, the project that I mentioned for Melocity, you know, right now uh, there is a Hacktoberfest, and there are a few issues with Hacktoberfest label, so feel free to submit some Go contributions or UI contributions. And again, thanks for watching and till next time. Bye.